What is up guys, this is Hunter McDowell and this is the shape-shifting tutorial. Now, um, I filmed off my GoPro and sometimes it takes long to render um, through and so I already went ahead and set it up. Let me go ahead and explain it. First of all, what you're going to need is, well, one clip, but you're going to need to split it into five different layers. So I have the Hunter layer, which is just the regular of me walking through and stuff like that. And... Then I have the hunter mask, which we won't actually need to create a mask. This is just a supporting layer to the Jordan mask. So you duplicate the layer again and create the called Jordan mask. And then you duplicate it again and just title this Jordan as my brother's Jordan. And he's the um, person that I shapeshift into. Now for the Jordan mask, we're going to zoom in here real quick. And you're going to see I only have a very few frames, very minimal around here and that's how you want to trim it. This is going to be the transition effect. So in order for that to happen, all you're going to have to do is for the drawn mask, create a mask by hitting G on the keyboard. Now, what I really suggest is just creating a detailed mask so far, but what you're going to see here in a second is when you start to, first of all I'm going to change the mask color, but when you start to, um, when you are done with the mask, you're going to start to see something very, very peculiar. The peculiar thing is you're going to see an outline of the original person, which is me. For example, I move the mask here, and I should pop up. Now, it renders very slow on half res, so what I do is go to custom, then I hit up to 30 pixels for the render every 30 pixels horizontally and render one pixel vertically. I, once I hit that up, then it makes a very fast, sometimes fast render, and stuff like that. Just, it will have to take time for it to render through. But, um, you automatically see that there's another arm right here. That's because you need to take the mask out like this. Now, what I'm going to do real quick is go up to about 20 pixels. Now, because of the render stuff, and it's going to take a lot longer, this tutorial will probably be a little bit longer, and I'm also uploading another teaser video. Anyways, so it's rendering again just so we get it, and we're going to mask path back backwards. The reason why is because this is the end of what I want it to look like, you know. And you can see here that there's a little bit of issues with, you know, the mask at this frame point in time. Now, of course with this we, it's very easy we just have to fix it. I'm just going to go back up to half res again because it's really messing up the render here for who knows what reason. Um, but yeah. So hopefully this actually renders through very good. This has been very difficult. This, the only reason why it, this took me forever to do because of this render, I generally do not like, that's why I like filming off my computer, because the videos are 640 by 426, and it's a lot easier to edit it. Okay, so you see we have this issue here, where my, you know, shorts are in the way, so you're going to have to go around here, that's, that's what it's going to have to look like throughout the whole entire thing. I'll go to the third as part of it. You can see that when I'm at half and third that it won't do anything. And of course you're going to hit mask path so we can mask it. Untoggle it to see if there's no one there. There's no one there, which is good. I'm going to go forward one more frame. It's going to render. And you don't see anything. So what you really want to do is you don't need to actually render, uh, map, you know, go through every single frame to mask path it. What you actually want to do is just go back every two frames, let it render through, and then you think to yourself, okay, there's nothing wrong. So untoggle the mask, go back a couple frames, let it render through, and stuff like that. And you can see here that there's no issues right now. And of course, I have it like this. Now this is a live action video, meaning that it will eventually, you know, um, have to mask path. But if you're using a frozen layer, for example, it won't. 
I really hope it didn't freeze so that we can get back. But anyways, what we're going to do is just go back to the first frame right here. Let it render through. So again, you'll see him, his arms moving a little bit. And you can see here, there's a little distortion right there. We don't want that to happen, and we see that it's fine. So again, go a few frames, let it move forward. But the Jordan layer is technically working a lot better by having a mask like this. So we're just going to create a keyframe right there. And we can go a few more frames and see if there's any changes. Okay. And we have this. Now, what we want to do basically is create the transition effect in between here. So we already have the endpoint, which is here, right? So what we will really want to do is go to the beginning and delete that keyframe. Because now we get the idea. And what you're gonna do is take these individual frame keyframes that we have and just start up here. Now what I did basically is try to match it up as perfect as possible. And one thing that you will really want to do with the shape shifting effect is make sure you have both actors in the same exact position, everything in the same position. Because if you don't, then it will just really, really mess it up and just make it not the greatest. Okay, so you can see that that's perfect, but you can see that my brother was not um, in the same position, which I didn't like. Okay, so the feathering you want to use is between five to 15 pixels. For me, um, around 10 to 20 pixels worked, because the more feathered out you have. So you can actually use a little bit more, so you can go up to 70 as an example, but that's really bad. Or you can go down to 30, and you get this. So let's just hit at 20. Alright, so we have this, and it's a perfect transition part. But what you want to do is go ahead and highlight the bottom keyframes like this. Bring them down. Then take this one in, close it in right here, and this is what we're going to do. Just bring it in right here. So you want to find uh, specific areas, basically, of when you want the transition to happen. So you want a delay of just a few frames. So we're just going to scroll forward here. We're going to hit U, first of all, to see the keyframes. You want the delay to happen right here. What we're going to do, first of all, is take that off. Oops. Take the keyframe off. And basically what you want to do is just, as an example, um, you just want to go in the, uh, every few frames and just make a transition. Now the reason why you want to do this is because you don't want to, you know, make, bas you basically don't want to make the transition too short and you also don't want to make it too long because the longer you make it then, you know, basically yeah, the effect won't go out. So when you go up halfway, let's say we just want to make the outline near the shorts area. Of course, we're going to keep it about here because this is where the original. So we're going to move this one up here. I think there was about three frames here. We're going to move this one back up. This one back up. We're just going to move all of them up to the shorts area. Bring it out a lot. And then what we're going to do is zoom out, and we're going to highlight those beginning keyframes right here. And you can see the rendering speed is very, very slow, causing everything to not turn out properly. So what you want to do is just bring these in, and I'll just leave it out of the, I'll leave it to here again. Okay, so after it renders, you'll start to see that his pants are changing. You know, on toggle it, it's perfect transition. Now what you want to do is then go a few more frames, and this time we're going to do the full body mode. So we're going to bring it out and complete the transition. So you're just going to bring each and everything just a little bit out. Continue to make many adjustments just in case. Now something I really like is color correction. And you would know how to do that because, of course, that was stupid, sorry. I like color correction because it sometimes hides effects 
but you do see here that there is an issue once it renders. You'll see here in a second that there is an issue with the left arm. Now, of course, he completely transitioned, and with the toggle mask on, we have this. We're going to want to fix that just a little bit. And we have this, and we complete the transition part. So what I'm going to do is go to my custom settings again, go to 10, hit OK, so that we can just, so I can show you the transition of what we did. So basically, when you toggle it, this is what the transition will look like in a second. Let me go back to custom, turn it up to 30. It'll be a little blurry, but I'll be moving my mouse around stuff. So, um, we've basically just completed the whole shape shifting effect. You get the idea. It's basically, you know, having two actors in the same spot and then taking the actor that you are shape shifting into and making the mask as well as keeping the other person underneath. So that is how you do the effect, is just between layers. So I actually completely explained it in the beginning. So you could have just stopped the whole tutorial in the beginning. But as I go back a few frames, you can see the transition is happening very smoothly. And with the feathering, it's amazing. Now the color correction I use is I went into iMovie and I did a video effect and it had day for night video effect on there. So I liked that and stuff. So you see here that it's a little messed up because the positioning and stuff, that's okay. But now you get the idea. I really hope you guys like this shape-shifting effect. I know that there was a comment on my video saying this is not good. Well, this is the only shape-shifting effect I've come up with. I'm currently trying to work on the Mystique one because I know that would get lots of views on both the teaser and tutorial for that. But anyways, please go ahead and check out my Deadpool video. I'm just going to say Deadpool video, I'm not going to tell you, I'm going to keep it a surprise of what it is, because the tutorial will be coming out on Monday, March 28th. But anyways, have a good day guys, happy Easter to everyone, and see you tomorrow in the Deadpool tutorial.